Welcome to the SAP HANA Academy. My name is Bob and in this series of videos we'll be looking at SAP S4 HANA. In this series of videos we'll be looking at how to use core data services. In this video of the series we're going to look at creating basic also known as interface views. So we've already looked in previous videos at creating users and creating an empty ABAP project within the SAP HANA Studio. And what we're going to do in this series of um, two videos is build a CDS view on top of the data contained in this demo data table called SCAR. So you can see it simply lists a list of carriers. Um, it's in a demo database called SFLY and it lists the various carriers, the ID and the currency code. We're just going to expose this for your old data as a gentle introduction into the concept of CDSs. So what we need to do is go back to our ABAP perspective and we create our CDSs here. Now think about CDSs, it's not written in ABAP, but it ex or the objects will exist in the ABAP repos repository. Essentially it's a combination of both OpenSQL and a various list of annotations. The annotations then further define the view as well as all the data elements within that CDS. So again, we're going to build ourselves one of these basic views on top of that table here. So the first thing we need to do is we've built our empty package. I'm going to now go right click and I'll select new. And if I go to other ABAP repository object and go down, we've got core data services. And essentially, you've got two various options. You've got a DCL and a DDL. So at a very high level, the DCLs are used for security. So they, ena they enable you to do things like role level security. We're going to cover those in another series of videos. And instead, we're going to focus on these things called DDLs. So I'll select DDL source and I'll click next. Now this is going to go in the temp package. So there's nothing we need to change here, but we might need to add a description and a name. Now, what we're essentially doing is creating a view on that carrier table in S-Flight. This is the description I'm going to give. So it's, an, it's to do with airlines. It's a private view, and it's a VDM interface view. But when you build the CDS views, they share a namespace and therefore should not interfere with producted, productive or delivered views. So basically, it means that you must have a naming convention. So, for example, I'm going to create myself a view with the following name. So the syntax is normally ZX, which means it's a development workspace. Then you need to give a um, name. So this is normally the two letters from your user. So I'm going to do SH for the user. Then I'm going to do I because it's what's called a basic view. Now you're going to see there are differences between basic views and consumption views. A basic view would essentially hit the raw data in your tables. In between, you've got a series of views, and at the top, you've got what's called a consumption view. This is what your analytics or your old data would then be exposed to. So what we're doing is building one of these basic views or interface views, and that's why I'm putting an I. But essentially, it's what we call a basic view. Then I'm going to give the name of the view, which is underscore airline like so. So if we give it this name, we're adhering to a naming convention. So then I'll select next. Now the next screen will give us our selection of transport requests. Now transport requests enable you to move content from system to system. And these can be used for productive CDS views. But because these are local CDS views that we're using, they're not really necessary. We're going to cover this option, of course, in other videos. So I'll select next. And then you've got your list of templates. Now, these cover the most common use cases, such as doing joins between different tables or associations. And so we'll just now need to click on finish. Now, what you'll notice is when the CDS is created, several default annotations are automatically added. And we'll have a look at what those mean later on. So firstly, it's a good idea to change this view name because we had it an underscore. So all I'm going to do is add an underscore here and I'll change this to a I. So it's so that syntax now will go. 
Of course, the from statement here is not going to be data source name. We need to specify the table. So if I press control space, you'll get uh, some code completion. So as you can see here, it's listing all the objects I've got available to me, but we know we're going to use that SCAR table. So if I go back to my data browser, this is the table we're going to use, which is the carrier table from SFlight. So I'm going to type here in my code completion, oops, if I type um, S and then control um, space, if I continue to type, of course, we're going to get that SCAR data source. There we go. And of course, what you'll see on the left-hand side within our outline is actually we're building up that query. So of course, now we need to select our column. So we do this on line six. So again, to do this, all I need to do is press control space. And then we've got the option to insert all our various elements. So I'm going to select here car ID, which is just the ID. It gives you data type information. And we'll give it a... Um, an alias, so I'm going to just put as airline, just like a normal SQL alias. Now to add more columns, of course, you just add these below. So I'm going to also add um, control space. I'll add another column, which is currency code. I'll alias this as airline local currency. There we go. And then we'll add another column. So I'll just press space here. And we're going to add another column, which is the airline URL, which is essentially URL here. So it's this column here. And again, you've got the data type information on the right hand side. This is the airline URL. And I'm going to give this an alias as airline URL. There we go. Of course, because we're building up this view, you can see the objects in the select list of the view, the source table. So you can see how this outline is actually quite useful to check syntax. Now, the next part is to deal with these annotations. So we'll have a look at them. So the first one is the ABAP catalog SQL view name. Essentially, it's going to be the same as the view, but it's going to have um, no underscores. So it's going to be ZXSHI airline. So I can just replace that syntax here. And again, it's just the name without any underscores. Now, even though we've not looked at the other annotations, this view can now be checked. We can go, if we go and if I save and we expand our list of CDSs and go to our data definitions, you've got that ZXSHI underscore airline. If I activate, we can see it activated OK. And of course, to test, if I right click and go to data preview like a normal view, we're testing the view now. So again, of course, we've got the airline alias, the airline local currency, and of course, lastly, that airline URL. So to deal with the other annotations, and there's lots and lots of these annotations, and we're only going to cover the, the principal ones in this video. So another one that you might want to change is this end user text label. So I'm going to take out private view VDM. That's kind of more of a technical name, and I'm just going to put this as airline. Basically, I'm changing this to something that is more end user readable or translatable. And this text label is exposed on objects within your OData services. So I've changed that again to airline just to make it more readable. So as I inferred at the beginning of the video, there are different types of views. Um, this is what we call a basic view. So to indicate whether it's a basic, a composite, which is kind of like in between a basic and a, or a consumption view, we need to specify that here with a special annotation. So this is going to be good to show you how you add annotations. You can imagine it's very easy. I do the ampersand. The annotation I want to have include is VDM. And then you've got, obviously, the drop down. So I'm going to add VDM.viewType. Now, if I'm not sure what the options are, again, if I press control space, these are the different types. You've got a basic view, which again is used to directly access your database tables. And these are actually private in that the end user never accesses them directly. 
You've also got the option of a composite view. Now, this is the basis underlying view for analytics, and it's used to combine different views with what are called associations. We're going to have a look at that in a later video. And lastly, you've got these consumption views. So this is the end user view, which is accessible through an analytic front end or is used to publish to OData, for example. So for us, this is our basic view. We're hitting the raw table, so I'll select basic. And you can see here that we've got no errors. So later, because we want to do some analytics using these views, we're going to add another annotation. And that annotation essentially indicates that this is a dimension type of table. So to do this, I'm going to do um, an ampersand and type analytics. We've got that um, analytics data category. So if I select data category and I press a control space again, you've got different levels. You've got whether it's an aggregate, whether it's a cube, a fact. This is a dimension. It's a very, very simple example. Now, some of the annotations you only see at the top of your CDS. And there's a different set of annotations you'll see if you win within a select statement. So to give you a simple example, if I go to the top and I type a ampersand S and type semantics, nothing comes up. Semant nothing is coming up because this annotation only works within the select statement. So if I basically go here to my local currency and I go above the column and type ampersand, if I type semant, you'll see that some of these annotations appear. So to add a semantic, which is basically a way of describing the data, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, for the currency code, I'm going to say semantics and then dot currency code equals true. So I'm in, inferring, of course, that this is a currency code. And we can, of course, apply this as well to a URL. So if I type at and then type semantics. All I'm going to do is I'm going to infer that this is a URL. So if I type semantics um, and then I type dot URL, like before, I can add a colon and indicate that this is a URL, like so. You can see this also indicated on the left hand side. So just a few things. One thing is that because we want to expose this as OData, we need to define a key. So of course, our carrier ID is our primary key. Again, going back to the table, this is going to be our unique identifier. So what I'm going to do here is I'm simply going to say that the car ID, I'm going to type the word key, which indicates it's a key. And then lastly, the thing, one thing we haven't been through is this access control authorization check. Now, if you remember when we actually first created the DDL, there was an option to create a DCL. DCLs are to do with access controls. So kind of like role level security, you can define which user has access to which data in a specific table. We don't have any DCLs in this simple example. So at the moment, it's going to check for a, um, a DCL, but we don't have one, so it's not going to work. So if I do a control space, I'm actually going to say that it's not required. We don't need any form of DCL. So the, in this simple example, there's no security or there's no row level security. So when you've done that, that's it. Of course, what we'll do now is we'll save. And lastly, what you'll need to do is you'll see here that although it's saved, it's not been activated. So to activate, you click here. And now we can see it's activated. So a couple of things you should note, of course, on the bottom left hand side, you can see the objects which are selected. You can see that airline is a key. You can see that these have included semantics. And of course, lastly, the ultimate test is to right click and to test this basic view. So I'm going to do a data preview and we should get some data. So that's where we should be now. So now that we've done this, uh, what we're going to do in the next video is look at building, in this simple example, a consumption view. So we're not going to build any of these um, composite views, which are kind of like in the middle. We're going to build these end user consumption views, which will be accessed by analytics or if you want to expose this data as OData.